everyone. It's glad to see everyone before my call. So maybe I'm late today, yeah? Good morning. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So what's the time, Jos? At your side? Is it five o'clock or early than that? Or ma'am, so I didn't see you. I I said, what's the time there? Now it's five thirty. Five thirty. Okay, so ten here is five thirty. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me call everyone. Those who haven't joined is Anjali, Anthony, Sanal. No, is that anymore? Just okay. Be to be new. She knew. Cool window. Crown call. Welcome. All right, people are missing. So, Lissy, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Savita is also there. Savita is also there. Okay, that's what I was doing here. Okay, so Savita, how are you doing? Um. Okay, mm, so I hope your night shift is over. Ah, yes, it's over. It's over. Okay. And Lissy, what about you? Yes, ma'am. I'm nowadays concentrating on reading and listening. Mm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Still, few people are missing. I can see Anjali is not there. Okay, even Kalvinder is not there. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I have made an attempt to write that uh, letter. I'll send it okay. later, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> please. All right. Please go through. Sure, sure. Don't worry. You know the. Uh. First letters are, you know, we, we don't expect that much. It's okay, but don't feel uh, shy to share that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay, so today we are going to start. So anybody has any query with the yesterday session? Anything which is not clear to you before starting today's session? Oh, ma'am. Yeah. session was very, very good, helpful. very helpful. Very helpful? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So anything you want to know more? So, and you know, you must share with me that what are the problems that you're facing? For example, you know, you're not able to construct a sentence. So then we can have a, a different session just on one topic even. Okay, ma'am. Okay. okay. Yeah. But you guys yeah. have to come forward and tell me that this is the problem. Um, then it will be benefited. Okay. 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 Great. So good to know that nobody has any questions from the previous session. So then I can. Uh, I've already started a recording. So those who are not able to then can go through it. Okay. okay. So what I'm gonna do today. Um, I will share the speaking introduction, the how to make your speaking more effective and what are the things that you need to keep in mind okay. while speaking. Okay. All right. So okay. um, I'm going to share the screen and let me know. So before that, um, you know, I just want to take you through uh, just a quick recap as we have have already in this um, assessment criteria, speaking assessment criteria, but still, I just want to, to take you through a quick session. Okay. So listening, reading, yeah. So this is what I want to discuss. All right. So I hope everybody can see the screen. Yes, 
Okay, great. So this, um, just a quick background of speaking, uh, how this exam is conducted. The speaking subtest is basically for 20 minutes, approximately, you know, maximum I can say, but you know, usually it takes 15 to 15, 20 minutes in between that. So of course it will be in English and um, there will be a uh, two person, you and the interlocutor, you both will sit opposite to each other. So that's why I, uh, you will always be sitting on a chair, you know? So no need to say during the speaking when you say, please have a seat. Because if, if a person is already sitting, that looks quite awkward, okay? So no need to add that phrase while speaking. Now, another thing is um, that is, I have told you that basically there are two types of assessment criteria. One is linguistic and another is clinical communication. Yes, I hope it's clear to everyone. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, great. So under linguistic, there are mainly four points and each has six scores. Very important. That's what I say you when you speak. These are some silent features which a person is going to, examiner is going to assess in your. Let me say you again that the person to whom you will talk on a day of your exam is not an examiner. That person is just doing the role play of a patient or attendant. Okay. It, it will be an audio recording, recorded session and this recording will go to Australia to the OET and they will give you score. Okay, so that means very clear, a person who is going to give you a score that will be purely based on your recorded session, audio, not video. Okay, so first of all, there should be clarity what you speak, right? And speak slow so that a person can understand it clearly. Okay. So, of course, the silent features, they make a play a very vital role. So, intelligibility is the first one. Stress, intonation, rhythm, pronunciation. All these things, you know, how do you, uh, how's your sound? Are you posing, giving a proper stress on a word? Like you say, however, ever. The stress is on ever, not on how. Okay, so that's how the pronunciation that that's make a lot of difference again six marks for that fluency. I always say English is usually this, you know, no need to speak fast. Now, some people say if I will speak fast, maybe I have a very good um, you know, knowledge about this language, but that's wrong myth. So that's a myth. So never speak fast. It's always speak, you know, uh, speak people usually speak slow. So that is not a fluency if you will speak fast. You should give an adequate pause. That's what I say during the session. You know, when you say to the patient, you advise something to the patient, you must stop after that because the few second, 30 second pause, you know, even a 20 second pause is really important because that gives an idea um, to the patient to understand what you are saying. Now, if I will give a pause, for example, I said to the patient, uh, firstly, I would like to advise you about your lifestyle that you do this and this X, Y, Z changes. I will stop there for some second. Then I will say, is that okay? Can you do that? Now, when I give a pause here, that means I'm giving a time to the patient to understand what advice I'm giving to him or her. That's very important. It's, it has a six score. Keep that in mind. Okay. So then appropriateness of language. How well you explain. How will you explain in a layman language? I always say don't use any medical word, medical terminology like esophagus. And say there is an esophagus. Instead of esophagus, what you can say? Food pipe. Food pipe. Food pipe. Yeah. So use a lay language. Okay. Now, resources of grammar and expressions, rich, flexible vocabulary and confidence. You know, you might have heard from your friends that somebody has scored 320, 330, 340. That mark gone because this 1020 marks are for confidence. So confidence is very important. 
keep that in mind what you say if there is any wrong english you know the, you are using the wrong grammar it's okay few of grammar mistakes are still acceptable you can still score b grade but if there is no confidence you will not get b okay so make sure your confidence level should be on up level very important clear yeah? okay ma'am yeah so most important is the clinical communication criteria and remember these all four point has 666 ban so really important to fix you know keep this features of linguistic criteria linguistic means related to the language your grammar how do you speak your speed your vocabulary how confident you are this all include your six ban for these points however coming to the clinical communication criteria now there are you know the first very important when you meet somebody is a relationship building and that's what i always say based on a different setting that you should focus must uh, first on this thing you know always you are the one who will start the conversation don't wait for the other person to start the the person say that start that means you must start immediately because that's the time is started from his side if you will not start then your time will go okay so start the conversation you'll say good morning my name is tina and the nurse in this particular ward it will be given in the setting so let's how you will start the conversation by asking other person's name that how can i address you and then be attentive be attentive you have to listen to the other person very carefully for example you said what what happened you are not you are looking very anxious you know if he, he or she says something you must listen to that attentively how can you for example if i am listening to your recording how hello anyone hello hello ah uh, can you repeat we could hello yeah i'm saying how the patient you are attentively listening to the patient okay yeah how you will make sure how an examiner can assess you on this be attentive okay uh, when will answer okay, okay. the concern of uh, the patient right so you have to say okay all right i understand you know these are the points with the so that i can give you i will have a being an examiner i will have a checklist when i will listen to your recording and i will have all these points in my checklist so i have to see you started the conversation okay give her this three marks three marks for all this okay all right be attentive yeah non judgmental okay so for example like i always say non judgmental that when patient say no i don't want to take medicine never be judgmental and say no you have to take it as it is prescribed by your doctor now yeah so that is non judgmental you are not going to judge the patient show empathy very very important point so if these all points are there in your uh, relationship building you'll get marks the moment the patient say oh my oh my you know the night was really terrible i wasn't able to sleep because of pain and your immediate response should be oh i'm so sorry to hear that i can understand how it might must be difficult for you you know that is empathization i hope it's clear this part relationship building as i have already explained in a previous session so this is just a quick um uh, background of that so this is very important it has three marks relationship building okay Yeah. Okay. Okay, ma'am. All right. Any any doubts about this? Is there any concerns for this particular point, relationship building? How to build the relation? No, this Hello. is what we do normally. Yeah. Yes, Jose. Hello, ma'am. Uh, when we ask the patient to take a tablet and he is refusing, 
uh, what could be our next uh, conversation like how it how it must progress yeah for example uh, yes you said um, that you know take this medicine and patients no i don't want to take the medicine yeah that's what is your question what should i say yeah so your next response should be okay i understand your concern john that you don't want to take the medicine uh, well would you mind explaining me the reason what is bothering you why you don't want to take it explore that is your second point understand the patient's perspective and explore the patient's concern oh, yes, okay that's the second one never say yes or no immediately always say okay i understand your concern would you mind explaining me that what is the reason all right you got the answer yes i got okay so that's what is the second topic understand the patient point of view and incorporate the patient's perspective so pick up the points out of that that what the patient has a doubt for example let the patient say um i i don't want to take this medicine because one of my friend was taking and his liver got damaged so i don't want to take it now this is patient concern now you have you understood that he is not taking because his friend had this problem now you have to give the relating explanation to the patient concern and needs that's your second point under this so what you will say okay well i understood um in maybe in your friend it, it would be a different case okay and um, but in your case it, it is a different scenario as you have a severe pain and this medicine uh, is prescribed you only for few days okay so it's not going to damage your liver that could be a different scenario you know every patient has a different problem but in your case your liver is already fine and this medicine is not going to affect on your liver so don't worry about that this is the safest medication this is how you have to encourage the counsel the patient clear yes okay okay you will get many uh, concerns like this you know there was a one case in which the patient said i don't want to undergo the blood transfusion when you ask the reason you'll say that you know maybe this lab is not that safe for a blood transfusion so then you have to encourage the patient for taking a blood transfusion because of x y z that this is the um you know um, and you can jca accredited and we have the uh, best standard of the lab and it is safe we do you Uh, cross matching and different this x y z reason that you have to explain them all right so coming to the next is providing structure means next when the patient say you have already answered her question and then you will say okay well moving further that that's how you have to move further purposefully and logically and um, you have to use certain techniques to organize the explanation you know you can say you can give an examples as well if the patient is concerned about something for example uh, you know in case of a uh, insulin the patient has a concern that i don't want to take insulin because because of this x y z reason happen i can collapse uh, while playing i am a player then you can give a reason the example well don't worry about that there are a lot of people those who take that you know any 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 celebrity who takes that you can give an example of that so that's also you can um, you know do that and whenever you're changing a topic now this is very important that make clear changes in topic for example if i'm advising the patient about diet now and i have to talk about wound then i need to say that uh, the first i will talk about the diet and secondly i will highlight the importance of exercise in the life in the daily routine so whenever you are changing topic from diet to exercise you need to highlight that i'm going to talk about this i will highlight this this is very important okay use this lines which clearly indicates to the patient that you are going to change the topic clear yes sir okay great the next is information gathering now this is again very important point here 
please include this in your speaking when you speak. This is very important. Each has three points, I, I, as I said previously. So make a note. Being an examiner, I will have a checklist. We'll tick all the things. So always ask open-ended question. Leading to closed means your first question will never be closed-ended. It will always be open-ended question. For example, we say that you know, if you need to ask about the patient's uh, routine, we did a certain topic. You know, after the surgery, the patient readmitted again for the CABG, and you, it is given the reason is again the dietary things. So you need to ask that six months before you are uh, already underwent surgery, what happened now? So the best question to ask is um, about this. That, would you mind explaining me in detail about your daily routine after your previous discharge? six months ago or how was how, what is your uh, daily routine uh, for last six months what you do you know, always ask open-ended what about your smoking habits never say that do you smoke no that's wrong that's a closed ended closed ended means when the answer is in yes or no or one word or two word open-ended means when the patient has to talk more Okay, so always give an opportunity to the patient to talk more and let the patient explain his own condition in his own words. Always let the patient talk more. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Never ask two questions together. No compound or leading questions. Always ask one by one. Minimize interruption. If patient is saying something, never interrupt the patient in between. OK, and if he has any doubt, you must give a clarifications. Now, this is very important step of summarizing information. That means when you ask the question to the patient that uh, what about your daily habits? What about your social do you, uh, smoking, drinking? And then at the end, you have any allergic to any medicine. When you ask all these details to the patient, you must summarize at the end. OK, John, so as you told me that you are a chronic smoker, as you smoke for the last 20 years, you take 10 cigarettes in a day, uh, you don't drink, and there's no allergy to any medication, and there's no past medical history. Is that right? So yes. Always verify. Is that correct? Is it right? That whatever the information you have is correct or right, right? So this is very important to know, to confirm with the patient. This is a very, very important step. The last is the information giving. Um, I'm just going through this in a quick way because we have done it previously and I just want to do other things as well. So uh, in case if you have any query, you can go to the previous videos as I have already uploaded now on a YouTube. So you can go through any previous session as well. Um, but if you have any doubt now in between, you can always ask me. OK. I hope this information gathers in OK. You got the questions how to ask and how to summarize the information. Yes, sir. Yes, yes Jose, I hope it's clear to you as well. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. OK. The rest of the people have already done it many times. So if you uh, have any doubt, you can ask. OK, don't feel that nobody's asking. They've done it before as well. So those who are new, yes. feel free to ask any question, OK? All right, so last one is information gathering, uh, sorry, giving. Now it is the time to give. You have already gathered the information, summary you have. Now you will give the information. You will um, establishing what the patient already knows. So you will gather that all information. Okay, before you advise, because this is information giving, at the end you have to advise the patient. So before you advise anything to the patient, you must check the patient's knowledge first. For example, let's say you're going to talk about um, uh, anything about the insulin advice. You're giving advice to the patient to um, start insulin. Then you must ask the patient, does she have any idea about insulin? Why it is important? He'll say no, okay. Then you say, okay, don't worry, I'll explain you. If you say yes, 
he will say that i know that insulin is important it is an injection blah 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 then you can say well i really appreciate your knowledge however i would like to add on some more information then you talk you know firstly secondly and finally always talk in points because use a small line don't make a long sentence make a small small sentence okay there will be less mistake okay and moreover if you will talk in a points like firstly you do this give a pause then check patient knowledge pause is for just to 10 to 15 to 20 seconds you know and then check the patient knowledge i hope you are getting me what i'm saying so when you ask they do you understand when you ask this kind of a phrase that means you are encouraging the patient to share the thoughts or concerns or questions whatever is in his mind okay so this is a very very important step to you as when you advise the one point give a pause for few second that means you are giving a time to the patient to understand what you have advised and then ask the questions that um, i hope it's clear to you so yeah that means you are encouraging very important step okay so same likewise you have to do firstly secondly and finally there will be always three advices always will be there and at the end you need to ask do you have any further questions for me so now okay so then just you can say all right if there's no please uh, this is the leaflet for more information in case if there is any query please use the buzzer i will be able to assist you now this is in case of the ipd if patient is admitted we can say please use the buzzer and if it is not a ipd opd case give a leaflet and wish the patient a speedy recovery that wish you speedy recovery yeah i hope it's clear to everyone any doubt from because i want to move to the next one so any doubts no no okay all right just i hope you got some idea yes so sure, sure. okay all right now moving further as we have just now talk about the criteria that as i said clinical and linguistic now it's very important for you to understand that what kind of exam will be as i explained earlier the moment you will enter in the room of the interocular you will see is he or she is sitting on a chair and then ask you to sit and then you can of course when you go inside you greet the person say good morning yeah so uh, uh, he will ask you to sit and then how the round start he will ask you some warm up questions now the first there will be a warm up round and um it will be for few minutes on you know 2 to 3 minutes not more than that it will ask you one or two questions about your personal things so that for example what's your name what you do you know like that a simple question so they can ask you um, and there is no scoring for this warm up round this is just to make you comfortable because you are just entered in you know some people have really palpitation for the exam so they are anxious so to remove that anxiety they do this warm up round and there is no marking for that so you can be comfortable and you can answer whatever you want okay but of course the first impression is the last impression sometimes they record sometimes they don't so it is not really that important but still when they start with like what's your name that you can say that okay my name is this and um, then you say that uh, what you do i uh, i work as a nurse or so Hello. 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 